Do you want to maximize your potential and at the same time decrease your likelihood of injury in your specific fitness journey? If the answer is yes to that question, this video was designed for you. Using the most foundational exercise that we can use, that is the deadlift. I'm gonna walk you through my top seven tips for how to maximize your potential and also decrease your likelihood of injury. And that is my promise. Starting from the ground, tip one, go barefoot. Starting from the ground, the key is to get whatever's on your feet off your feet. If you've got a shoe like that, you're very unlikely to feel the actual ground beneath your feet. I can't tell you how many times I've had clients take their shoes off and they feel the ground and actually are able to execute a deadlift, a swing, a clean, all of those kettlebell movements with a higher level of precision. They say, I'm feeling the ground now. If you absolutely have to wear a shoe, I would highly recommend something like this, a Vivo Barefoot, which is very flexible and allows your foot to be a foot. If you can adventure without those, I would highly recommend something like this, perhaps an Ninjinji sock. Yeah, the sock with fingers in it, that's how I roll. All right, so again, start from the ground up. Okay guys, tip two, intra-abdominal pressure. A fancy way of saying a deep breath held within this cavity is what will stabilize your spine during that deadlift, that clean and that swing, as well as that snatch. I wanna show you a very quick example of what I mean by that with the use of a soda can. Soda can, pop can, beer can, whatever you wanna call it. When it's not open, there's a tremendous amount of pressure. How much pressure is in this? Let's take a look. In to understand intra-abdominal pressure, let's use the soda can. I will stand on it and it will not crumble. Will not crumble. However, the second I open this thing up, I take some fluid out of this thing and pressure out of this thing. Watch what happens. Point proven. So tip two, we need to breathe with intention. Deep breath in, fill in that intra-abdominal cavity, and keep the core strong. Otherwise, it's hard to do a deadlift if you don't have that intra-abdominal pressure. Again, point two. All right, point three. We need to create a scapular and lat engagement piece to the deadlift. If you're not including those two elements, that is retracting the scaps as well as engaging the lats, you're leaving your back to be a primary mover on this movement. So one thing I've often done is said to my clients, we're standing over that bell first, finding that nice grounded element in our feet. But then here's the key thing with the kettlebell deadlift. The bell is in line with my tibia. You'll also notice my arms are in line with the medial aspect of my, my knees. You'll hopefully notice my back is neutral, but with the arms being inside of my legs, I can actually push against my legs find my lats and also retract my scapula. Not rounded, we're rolled back. We now have our lats, we have our scaps in, engaged, we can grab that bell and then stand up nice and tall. It's important to note, this is not a quad exercise, it's not a squat. So the hips need to be higher than the knees, the tibia is perpendicular, and you need to feel the hamstrings before we lift this bell. So again, arms are inside your legs, this allows you to retract the scaps, find your lats, deep breath, stand tall, shoulders back. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Another key point is the timing of your breathing. This ties into point two or that intra-abdominal pressure or creating a high level of intra-abdominal pressure. I cannot stress enough, if you're brand new to a deadlift, I would encourage the following breathing sequence. We'd be in this low position. We take a deep breath in. Release at the top, deep breath at the top, hold pressure, and then return to the ground. If you're a more experienced lifter and you have the lung capacity and the tolerance, I would encourage the following. Here we go. Good position over the bell, deep breath in. In that case, deep breath in, hold pressure, hold it all the way to the top of the lift, release the, the pressure at the bottom. Again, depends where you are on the journey, but I would highly recommend you experiment with that to find where you are the strongest. If you're brand new to exercise, you might need to breathe more frequently just because the cardiovascular system is not developed yet. The kettlebell deadlift and the deadlift itself is a hip hinge movement. It is not a squat. 
So I'll utilize this PVC pipe just to reinforce these points of contact. You'll notice that it's touching the, the coccyx bone and it's also touching the very top of my head. You'll notice I am looking to the floor. I am encouraging when I coach folks on this, this is the starting position. I have tension in my hamstrings. I am ready to roll. We take this PVC away. This bell is in the right place. And now we can execute this deadlift. Again, if you don't feel tension in the hamstrings, this is not a true hip hinge. We're using a squat position, which we do not want. Hip hinge equates to a deadlift. And in this final tip, I want to suggest to you to create as much total tension as you possibly can. And that starts at the horn of the bell. So what I want you to consider doing, next time you come into a deadlift, I want you to squeeze the handle of this bell as if you were squeezing Play-Doh and Play-Doh is oozing through your hand or your fingers. So we come up to that bell, squeeze that bell, create significant tension, and then that transfers into my lats, my rear delts, I even feel it in my hamstrings, and now I am lifting and moving mountains. I can promise you, starting at that horn with high tension will increase your strength by at least two to three times. Okay guys, as I mentioned in the very front of this video, when you master these elements of the deadlift, the kettlebell deadlift, which is the cornerstone of your fitness journey, you'll then be able to maximize your kettlebell swing, kettlebell clean, as well as your kettlebell snatch. Again, it's all about maximizing your potential, but also minimizing the likelihood of injury. Again, I know it sounds like there's a lot of stuff to process, but I can promise you, eventually it'll feel like you're riding a bike or walking. You won't have to think about all of these little fine details. It'll just happen the moment you take that first deep breath, grab that bell with intention, and are grounded to the floor. All right, friends, let's get strong. Let's stay strong together. Let's stay Tusker strong. <laughs>